After over 250 hours of bringing the best to you, Rick and Gene are going to them. Welcome to Everyday Connection on the Road with your hosts, Rick O'Shields and Gene Victoria Norlock, bringing your inner life to your entire world. who got wounded or injured could actually infuse people water right directly into the bloodstream, into their veins. To in increase their volume until they could make it up with new blood. Yeah, it's it just the same, the same constituents as in plasma. And, um, and so they didn't die. And they made it, and it's completely sterile too, because of all the, the thickness of the, of the pipa coca. Um, shell. It actually takes about nine months to filter that water in through that shell. And so it's very sterile. It's amazing. And, and, and surely if you wanted any indications about us being connected to all the life on the planet, there would be a good one for you. And a good lesson in how, uh, how Mother Nature already provides whatever we need. I mean, exactly. goodness gracious, science field has been trying to synthetically produce a blood substitute for, for blood for I ever, as far blood as I ever. know, that you know, it's kind of one of their visions that they'd like to do so that they can, so that there you go, Mother Nature's already provided it, so why are we wasting the money? Why not just plant more trees? Except we, we have to look at what Coca-Cola and Pepsi are doing with Pipa Cocoa Water. They're trying to make it the, the new drink, the new sports drink. Really? Yeah. But oh, yeah. If you read about it, it, what they're doing is not very good. Well, they would manipulate it. I tried some of that. Uh, a friend suggested it strongly to me because uh, everything that I have going on physically and uh, uh, it was just horrid. <laughs> I'm sorry, Coca-Cola, but I, I I spit it out. And wow. I've had green coconut water from a green coconut and it's not like that. No. And so... Any of you folks that have tried that stuff in the funny aluminum box looking thing, have no fear. Try some real, fresh, cold well, people water. They're going to have to come here, unfortunately, because what they're doing to the green coconuts, they either run them through <laughs> x-ray machines or microwaving or something. So they're, once again, they're altered by the time they get to the States. Yeah. I think that's one of those things that, that I mean, we talk about often on the show is that you we bring people on from all over the world and we talk about how they have their different ways of living and expressing mm -hmm. their being. And um, you know, we, we have this perception living in the States or in Canada that we have an idea of what these tropical fruits taste like. But I tell you true, I mean, I didn't eat a real mango until I went to the Philippines. I had never eaten a real mango until I went to the Philippines. I've had mangoes all my life. But it's not the same. I mean, you really have to... You have to get it fresh from the tree, from the locals who picked it, from basically the bush. And um, it's, it's an entirely different flavor. And it's just like when I grew up, we had we lived near a farm. And all of our meats, all of our eggs, they were all farm, off, straight off the farm. We never bought meat from the grocery store. So it never hit a grocery store shelves. It was a, and I know the difference between farm fresh meat that hasn't been jacked with that's been field fed, as opposed to grain fed meat that I'm getting in the grocery store. There's a difference in the taste. And I think that when you go and you actually start experimenting with these things, you start traveling, you start discovering, you, you discover for yourselves what a, a difference there is. What a huge difference. It's not just the taste, but also the effects of your body, like the energy. 